cross. So they're parallel and congruent bases separated by the height. Okay, so that's what a prism is. Cylinder is basically the exact same thing, okay? It looks like a, a can of some sort. You could almost think of it as a circular prism. The top and bottom are circles, okay? And it's separated by the height, okay? And the two circles are parallel and congruent. So the formula is really easy. It's the area of the base times the height. So the capital B means the area of the base. So not the length of the base, but the actual two-dimensional area times the height. So what you could think of is you could think of this as a triangle and you're stacking up these triangles on top of one another until you get a three-dimensional object. So it's like a sticky notes, you know, a notepad, you stack them up, that gives you the third dimension, that gives you the volume 3D, right? Okay, so if we find the, let's look at this example, if we find the volume of this triangular prism, okay, now notice the, the dots here, the dashes, that just means that we're looking through the object to the other side so that we can kind of get that sense of 3D on a flat surface. Okay, but let's go and find the volume on this one. It's the area of the base times the height. Now what I like to do is I like to write down the formula, and you might want to do the same thing too, but then what we can do is we can subdivide the formula. So the area of the base that's a triangle. What's the formula for area of a triangle? It's one half base times height times the height again. Okay, so let's not get confused. There's a lot of B's and a lot of H's, right? So the, the capital B means the area of this base, the area of this triangle. The little b means the length of the base. So the base here in this triangle is either three or four, okay? Three could be the base and four could be the height of the triangle, kind of like this. See, three and four, okay? And then the height, okay, of the overall prism is the 10. That's what's separating the two triangles, the two parallel congruent bases. So if we put these values in, we have 1 half, 3 times 4, and then the overall height is 10. If we multiply all those together, we get 3 times 4 is 12, times 10 is 120, times a half, or divided by 2 is going to give you 60 units cubed. So cubed means we're filling this up with like little... Uh, ice cubes, you know, so to speak, like that. How many of those little cubes would fill up the inside of this container? Okay, the next example, we're going to talk about the volume of the cylinder. Now, I just want to say, if you're enjoying these videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And uh, I've got more videos like this coming for you, and you can check out some of my past videos. But let's look at this last example, uh, cylinder. Okay, same idea, we're going to find the volume. So it's the area of the base times the height. The base is a circle. What's the formula for area of a circle? It's pi r squared, right? So, and then times the height. So the overall height we know is 10. We know what pi is, it's 3.14. And then the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. So they give us that, that's four, four squared. So remember, you wanna do the order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, right? So four squared is 16, times 10 is 160, and we'll just leave pi as pi, so that'll give us an exact answer. 160 pi units cubed. We're filling this up with like little.